Heavenly Father, once again, Lord, we just thank you for our many blessings, Lord. We just thank you for the, the wonderful people of Gulf County, Lord, and we just continue to pray for the United States of America. Father, continue to give us all wisdom and knowledge and understanding as we make decisions concerning your people. Father, we pray for each elected official, Lord God. Father, we pray, Lord God, for our military, law enforcement officers, Lord God, first responders. We lift them all up to you, Lord. And Father, we just want to tell you thank you, Lord God. Thank you for just, just keeping us, Lord God. Thank you for, Lord God, watching over us. Thank you for watching over our families, Lord. We thank you for the wonderful people, Lord God, that are, that showed up here today, Lord God, for, for this meeting, Lord. We just ask and, and pray, Lord, that you be with us all. Bless our families. Bless Gulf County. Bless the United States of America. We give you praise, we give you glory, and we give you all the honor. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Please join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, good morning to everyone. Welcome to the Board of County Commissioners meeting. March 26. If you have a cell phone, please silence your cell phone. Um, if you like, we come before the board. We would love for you to come before the board. Um, we have a time set aside um, at the end of the meeting. Um, if you're representing yourself, you get three minutes to represent the group. You get five. Just make sure you fill out the form located by Ms. Rhodes. And please just make sure you state your name and address for the record, please, uh, into the microphone. Um, at this time, we're moving on down to the uh, consent agenda. Is there anyone in the audience with any questions or concerns with the consent agenda? Anyone in the audience, questions or concerns? Consent agenda. Staff members, any questions or concerns with the consent agenda? Right, any board members, any questions or concerns with the consent agenda? Thank you, sir. Any more, any more board members? Any questions or concerns with the consent agenda? Excuse me, Chair. And that was a decrease in the amount. It was to close it out. It's a decrease. I think it's eighty-nine thousand. Let me all look and see. Uh, Forty-eight thousand. Forty-eight sixty-seven point sixteen. Gotcha. Thanks, sir. Thanks, sir. Thanks Chairman. All right, That's yes, all sir. I have. Uh, any more board members, any questions or concerns? Uh, Michael, we don't have anything on that on site in that consent. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. All right. All right. Entertain the motion. We accept the consent agenda as printed with uh, Commissioner Husband abst abstaining from page 27. So moved. I right, got a motion by Commissioner Farrell. Second. Second by Commissioner Rich. Any uh, further board discussion? Right, anyone in the public? One in the public. All right, any opposition to the motion? All right, Mr. Novak, correct me if I got this right. Motion going to pass 4 and 0 with one abstention. All right, thank you, sir. All right, Mr. Hammond, you have the floor, sir. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, Commissioners. Uh, page one in my packet, Lynn has got a veterans update. Get her to come up. Good morning, Commissioners, <clears throat> staff. I want to take a few minutes just to uh, give a quick update. Uh, we haven't updated the board in quite a while. We have a lot of things going on with our veteran service. Uh, first of all, the services that our office uh, provides, uh, we are doing in-person appointments for veterans Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday. Those appointment times are 8 a.m., 10 a.m., 1 p.m., and 3 p.m. Um, I'm asking that veterans and SHIP applicants call to schedule appointments so that we don't have so many walk-ins um, and interrupt me when I'm in the middle of appointments. So that's the reason for that. Um, we assist with compensation, health care, pension, education, uh, dependence indemnity compensation when a veteran passes, pretty much anything that a veteran needs, any question they have, we, um, we will help them with anything that they need. Uh, we fill out paperwork, we file paperwork, uh, we file appeals all the way up until um, 
the judge makes a decision, we can help the applicant until they get to that step. Um, I am doing some in-home and nursing home appointments for those that can't make it into the office. I do have some housebound veterans, so I do assist the, them by going to their homes um, and filling out paperwork. We have the capability now of filing paperwork without them having to come into the office. Um, we are holding in conjunction with um, United Way. We do a monthly um, event uh, in Wewahitchka. It's called Coffee with the Vet, uh, trying to get out into the public, um, and we do that once a month. Um, our office is planning on attending festivals and events to get the word out. A lot of people don't know that veteran service officers are in the counties. So I'm trying to get the word out so that I can help more veterans. Um, and I inform the veterans, such as today, updates and information on services and eligibility for veterans. Uh, quick uh, veterans affairs updates. There's a lot going on in the VA. <clears throat> in August 22, the PACT Act increased eligibility and services uh, for Vietnam and Gulf War veterans. Um, so we've been very busy since uh, January of last year. We've had an increase in the number of veterans choosing Gulf County as their home. And with these increases, we have the PACT Act, we have the World War II Veterans uh, Act. It expanded the eligibility and services for Gulf War, uh, World War II veterans. Um, starting March 5th, any veteran that had toxic and hazard exposures while serving on active duty can enroll directly in VA health care without having to first file for benefits or, or service connection. Um, beginning 519, um, the VA is updating the digestive diseases uh, conditions. Um, there's 55 of those that are in the formulary for service connection been very vague in the past, so they're updating that. Um, the three largest changes uh, to that uh, digestive conditions will be celiac disease, irritable bowel syndrome, and hemorrhoids. They, the VA is making it so that service connection and the percentages that are service connected are, are better served for what current diagnoses are. Um, the VA is transitioning to direct deposit um, and online service for travel pay. Um, that's something that a lot of veterans are having issue with right now because the VA is transitioning. It's causing a little holdback on people getting their travel pay. So I ask veterans to be patient while they make that transition. Um, but eventually the, the, it'll be much more secure because all funds will go direct deposit into their accounts. You'll be able to file online. So once the VA gets caught up, then they will um, come much faster than what trying to come by regular mail. Um, in June of 22, uh, the VA had a um, Social Security income verification match. Veterans that were on pension had not been updated with their Social Security amounts in quite a while. So the VA started doing a match to see what those were to update pension amounts. Well, that created a lot of return to the VA and overpayments on the veteran's part. So some veterans have paid some of that back pay. Um, the VA had already reached out and they were paying that back. Well, now they have gone in and determined uh, in December of 23, the guidance now is they're not going to use that match, and so they're not going to collect those funds that were due. And anyone that had has paid that amount is going to be refunded um, any of those payments. So that, that's going to help a lot of our veterans on pension. The VA realized it was just too much of a burden on those that were already um, in need. Um, the next couple of slides, I um, want to kind of just give a quick overview of the PACT Act. And this, this slide uh, gives the previous indications of what a veteran could file for if they had age and origin exposure. It gives the dates. Uh, you had to have been boots on the ground in Vietnam. 
uh, brown water navy or blue water navy were the only con conditions in which you could file for Agent Orange exposure. The PACT Act changes all of that. They've added um, Thailand, Laos, Cambodia, Guam, and Johnston Atoll. Um, those exposed to radiation was expanded um, to those that were exposed to the cleanup of Inuitok Atoll. Um, those that were near the nuclear weapons um, on Air Force B-52 bomber, um, and the dates are there, January 66 to March 67. Um, there was a B-52 bomber um, fire, and that was January 21st, 1968. So anyone with that cleanup at, at Thule Air Force Base uh, in Greenland from January to September of 68 are eligible for enrollment. Um, any veteran or their surviving spouse that believes that they are eligible for any of these benefits, I highly suggest they contact me and let's see if they are eligible for benefits. Um, I want to stress surviving spouses of veterans that were not previously eligible. Um, that is very important because that's $1,700 to a surviving spouse who probably only has Social Security uh, in most cases. Um, so that, that could be significant Im improvement in their situations. And a lot of surviving spouses don't understand the service connections or what to do. So if anyone is not sure, um, have them call my office. I'll be glad to assist them. Um, Gulf War and post-911 locations, I'm not going to mention them all here. Um, th this presentation will be posted on my website for in the, on the county website as well so anyone that wants to look at it can see it um, but Afghanistan Uzbekistan Lebanon Egypt Syria um, all of those um, in, in in the airspace above any of those locations are all eligible for service connection um, after 1990 Bahrain Somalia Iraq Kuwait Saudi Arabia, all of those and their airspaces are all eligible for a PACT Act service connection. Two of the um, most sought benefits for service connection have been added. That is hypertension, which is high blood pressure, and MGUS, it's mon monoclonal gammopathy of undetermined significance. Um, those have been added. Um, hypertension is very prevalent in our veterans, um, so I would suggest anyone that has that file for benefits. Some of the other um, Agent Orange exposures for those uh, that were expanded in Vietnam, uh, bladder cancer, prostate cancer, respiratory cancers um, are all now presumptive. Other than the cancers, the other illnesses, diabetes, ischemic heart disease, Parkinson's disease, or Parkinson-isms, if someone has not been diagnosed fully with Parkinson's disease and they just call it a Parkinson-ism, they are eligible. Um, hypothyroidism, all of those are um, eligible for service connection. If a veteran served in one of the presumptive locations or their surviving spouse, um, if they've had brain cancer, kidney cancer, melanomas, um, pancreatic cancer, any cancer respiratory related, um, gastrointestinal, head, lymphoma, neck cancer, reproductive cancers, all of those are also presumptive. Um, asthma, uh, rhinitis, sinusitis, um, those as well. COPD is, is a large one. A um, little bit on the Florida statistics. We've had an increase of um, 26,514,000 veterans from 20, 2022 to 2023. Um, that is uh, equal in compensation increase of over $2 billion and a 6% increase in veterans 
Um, so it's an overall 21.8% increase just in compensation in Florida. Um, pension has um, had a decrease of 1,740,000, I mean 1,740 pension cases. And that is um, an 11.54% decrease and 5.22% decrease in their pension amounts that um, they've been eligible. I, I believe that a lot of our veterans are becoming eligible for compensation, therefore the pension is decreasing along with that increase in compensation. A little bit about Gulf County statistics. Um, from my program uh, is where the information from this slide comes from. Um, it's a relatively new program. We've only had it since 2020. Um, overall, new vet, just new veterans from 2020 to now is 13 or a 7.4% increase. However, my first six months, as you can see, uh, this year is already at 97. Um, with more than six months to go, if the trend continues, um, my increase could be 10.9% for this year if the trend continues for the next six months. Um, which would give me double-digit growth since 2020. Um, the forms that we submit uh, for our veterans has also risen. Um, so far this physical year, I've, I've exceeded the amount of forms submitted for the entire year since 2021. Um, so that growth could be over 100%. Um, Our data that comes from the state, from the VA, um, it runs a year behind, so I don't have 2023 data until next year. However, um, the information that I do have shows that we've had a drop of 39 veterans from 2019 to 2022. I believe the hurricane had a lot to do with that. Um, and that's a 2.5% decrease. Um, however, our unique patient totals, which is what they're saying are individual patients, has increased by 18, and that's a 3.9% increase. Uh, medical care in the county has risen by 1.08 million, or 33%, and education and vocational rehab has risen by $28,000, or 6%. So what does this say? Um, we've had a $4.481 million increase um, to county services to vets from 2019 to 22. Uh, that's a 36.03% increase. Compensation and pension is $33.6 million or 42% increase. Um, I am currently able to schedule veterans within a week um, of their call. Um, I do not take phone calls during appointments and I've had a lot of veterans that I can never get you on the phone so I ask that they be patient with me. I do return all of my phone calls but um, just wanted to let everyone know that I am able to schedule within a week but um, ask them to be patient and leave a message on my phone and I will get back with them to do that. Um, as I said, I do the uh, once a month coffee with a veteran. Um, that's the second Thursday of each month. We do that at Birdie's Brew. Um, the United Way is in charge of the suicide hotline. And um, they're there raising awareness for that while I'm meeting with veterans and answering their questions there. That event is from 930 to 1130 uh, on the second Thursday of every month. I plan to... Um, try to start something in Port St. Joe on this end as soon as I can uh, manage to get some time to do that and find a place to do that here in Port St. Joe as well. Um, I also plan to start uh, setting up at festivals in 20, at the, by the end of 2024 to connect with them as well. Um, last but certainly not least um, is the information for the crisis hotline. Um, if you have a veteran that's in need of any kind of support, um, all they have to do is dial 988. That, um, that's the 
fastest, easiest way for veterans to talk to someone or just talk, talk out and find a way to get the help that they need. Um, the last suicide prevention report I looked up last night, um, suicide is most prevalent now with veterans under the age of 45, and that's a first. Um, suicide rate in 2021 was 33.9% um, of veterans, 1.3% uh, increase from the numbers in 2020. Um, there's 6,392 6, reported suicides among the veteran population with 6,042 of those being men. So we have almost 300, a little over 300 female suicides a year. Last but not least, thank you for giving me the opportunity to present, but thank you most of all to all of our veterans and for their service and for their families. Thank you, Ms. Lynn. <clears throat> thank you, Ms. Lynn. Any questions for Ms. Lynn, commissioners? <clears throat> Ms. Ms. Law, Ms. Lynn, thank you for um, your time, your effort, and uh, giving back. You know, giving back to our veterans and being there for them. Um, um, your job means a lot to a lot of people. And um, from the board, we just want to tell you thank you because, um, like I said, we know you work hard um, to help those people in need. And thank you for all you do for them. We really so, appreciate it. Thank you. After I'm almost at 23 years with the county, and this is a very, very rewarding job, and I enjoy what I do, and I'm grateful that I'm able to help our veterans. We appreciate you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Yes, thank you, Ms. Lynn. Real quick for yes, you, sir. if yes, I can, sir. Mr. Chairman, uh, what what does our uh, week response time within a week compare in the panhandle? Do you have those <laughs> statistics, sir? I the I talked to Bay County several months ago and they were at about a month and a half to two months out. And I've heard that from veterans. Um, I know my responsibility lies with Gulf County residents and I've had a lot of people that have been previously been seen in Bay County. They're moving to Gulf County. Therefore, they're calling me saying, Bay County says now that I live in Gulf County, I've got to see Gulf County. Um, I see anyone that walks in the door. So. Uh, I do see other counties now and then, not a lot, but I do see other counties as needed when they can't get in. Um, I don't have the other county statistics, but I can get that for you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Clay's got number two. Okay. Uh, page 18 in your packet. This is a, a grant program that came along that Clay Kennedy's actually been running point on, but it's through U.S. Fish and Wildlife, and it's to reduce fuel loads to try to that are on the ground dead trees that are standing dead trees on the ground try to you know prevent wildfires and so uh we've identified a stretch of two stretches on county road 386 that the right of way increases in width and we've got certainly the qualifications to meet this program with the dead trees that are still standing and on the ground in there and so so the the memo is simply uh contingent upon a turner review allowing us to execute an agreement with U.S. Fish and Wildlife for that program. They'll use their contractors. Um, they'll come take care of it, either cut the trees, remove the trees, and then probably a prescribed burn uh, as part of the deal. And so it's, it's nothing that we're really handling other than we're allowing them to come in the right of way and do that. And it'll take care of a problem for us, for sure. All right, thanks, sir. Any questions, commissioners, for uh, in reference to this, Mr. Smallwood? I just want to add this it's a good thing and it's long overdue I wish we were able to come up with this program sooner to address the issue of dead trees and and uh, hazards off the edge of the roadway there thank you for participating in this and it'll be a great thing for 386 right. any more questions concerns there being not entertain the motion uh, we move forward so moved. motion by Commissioner Husband second second by Commissioner Fowler any further board discussion anyone in the public on this anyone in the public any opposition to the motion? All right, motion passed 5 and 0. Well, Mark or Commissioner Husband wants to talk about this uh, uh, update on the drainage at Beacon Hill Assisted Living. Yes, sir. Mark, if you, if 
you want to talk about, we've already worked really hard on this, and it's going to be great for those residents. Yes, sir. So we have established a a fairly substantial drainage issue in a subdivision just to the, I guess, east of Beacon Hill Park, and went back and forth with a property owner there at the assisted living, and, and we're on track to get a signed maintenance agreement with those folks to dig an outfall ditch through their property that will get rid of some water that's very much needed to move on. But anyways, it's been back and forth, back and forth, a lot of going out there in rain events, and property owners have been patient as we work through it, but we're nearing the finish line on being able to get some results for those folks. It's going to be great. Yeah. Thanks, Mark, for doing all your work on that. All right. So when they sign that, I'll execute it, and we'll get that done, and they're paying uh, part of the cost. Is that correct? Okay. Yes, sir. Page 19. In lieu of having another ordinance change, which I dread to have to talk about that, this is a policy change that would require all RVs located in the coastal corridor subject to mandatory evacuation shall register for the uh, alert, emergency alert system. They get the text, they can get the phone call, they can get the email through uh, Alert Gulf. It's simple to sign up and go on the website. That will prevent anybody from getting left out from these notifications, whether they're in Europe on vacation or whether they're at home at Indian Pass or at Beacon Hill. So that's our recommendation that we pass this board policy and then we will advertise it. Uh, any questions, commissioners? <clears throat> I think it'll certainly help, Mr. Chairman. I agree. Any more questions, concerns on this? Uh, I agree. Like I said, it, it, will, it will help get the word out just in case. I have to be now entertaining motion. We move forward. So moved. Motion by Commissioner McCrone. Second. Second by Commissioner Farrell. Any further board discussion? Anyone in the public on this? Anyone in the public? All right. Any opposition to the motion? All right. Motion passed 5 0. Page 20, need permission for a couple of letters to the governor uh, on our projects and for the chairman to sign. <clears throat> All right, we're going to send a couple of letters. You want to kind of tell the public what the letters are in reference to projects? Please projects? don't veto our projects, would be what <laughs> <laughs> So this is specifically on water, specifically on uh, shoot, the airport and fire truck for Dow All right. Okay. Any, uh, any questions, commissioners? All right, there being now I understand the motion. We send those letters to the governor. So I moved. Motion by Commissioner Senator Rich. Second. Second by Commissioner McCrone. Any further board discussion? Uh, anyone in the public on these letters going to the governor? Uh, any opposition to the motion? All right, motion passed 5 and 0. Number six, Clay and I have met a couple times with the library folks, Ms. Gibson and Mr. Mimic, and uh, they don't have Saturday hours. We've been getting complaints from, from some of the moms that, that work in Port St. Joe and can't get back in time to get the kids to the, to the library on Saturday. So, uh, recommendation that we uh, give them 5000 to finish out the uh, physical year, which is the next six months. Again, this goes through the Bay County system because all their employees are through Bay County. But in our discussion with them is they need to ask in the new budget year that's coming out that they'll have to turn in by June 1 uh, for that funding in the future year. But we think 5000 will get them through the fiscal year. Any questions, Commissioner? Yes, sir. Um, Mr. Chairman, they, they have somebody that's willing to work that on Saturday? They ask us for the help, but again, they're not our employees, so I, I don't know what they'll do if it's part-time or, or supplement. That's that's right. So okay. we, we, we just provide the money, uh, the the library system that, you know, that we're a part of that's run actually through Bay County would actually be the employer. So whether it's supplementing with current library employees or uh, a part-time Type situation. 
this would cover the cost to, to, to have it open on that Saturday. Okay. Any more questions, concerns? I do know the library is uh, utilized a lot. Oh, I mean, I had a chance to talk to Miss uh, Mimi, uh, I think it was last week, and um, uh, she was just talking good about, you know, all the people that they see and how much is being utilized. So it's, it's, it's a great asset for our community. So I have no issue with helping them get, the parents want to be there with the kids on Saturday, I think they should be there. So no issue from, I'm pretty sure from none of the commissioners. So uh, I entertain a motion and we move forward with it. So Second. moved. Right, motion by Commissioner Farrell. Second. Second by Commissioner Husband. Right, any further board discussion on this? Anyone in the public on that? One in the public. All right, any opposition to the motion? All right, motion passed five and all. I, I see Mike with BCC. Did you have something today? Come on, come on up. Today. Come, today. come on up here and while you're you coming up to talk about Amnesty today, I want to uh, I apologize. Go ahead. I want to give kudos to your your uh, folks on the Overstreet route. Uh, they helped an 83 year old that had failed. Uh, I don't know if he was in the process of taking his garbage can out or back in, and they helped him get up, and, uh, and that was a bad problem because he had laid there for about 20 minutes when the garbage truck came by, and uh, I actually heard him on the phone, uh, the garbage man saying that he'd go get his can and drag it to the road in the future. So that's that's good public service, and I'll give you all kudos. I don't know the gentleman's name, but you can probably figure it out. Oh, yeah, I know who he is. He does a good job. Uh, we're going to do Amnesty Day on... All right, this year we do have two dates. It is April 20th and October 19th, and it will be from 8 to 4 right here in front of... State your name and address oh, for I'm the I'm sorry, Rocker, I'm Rachel, um, live in Stone Mill. <laughs> um, but we do 8 to 4 right here in front of the courthouse. Um, the items we accept is the paints, household cleaners, batteries, your automotive fluids, pesticides, and any mercury. How much oil, Mike, at one time? How much oil will you let people? Uh, we, we've we had them bring in five-gallon buckets of it, okay. used oil. Okay. And we we just bring it to our yard and put it in a used oil container. We get it pumped out. So. Okay. That's the way we take care of that. So one, one more time, when is the Amnesty Day? April 20th, April 20th. and October 19th. And, and it's a free service to the public. No, right. no commercial is the only is the only rule. I think. Right. Yes, no, no commercial and like tires and stuff. They naturally bring them up to the transfer station. Any barbecue grills and stuff like that. They usually show up with all kinds of stuff. And we'll, what we can crush in the truck, we will. Okay. So, most of it, we'll have a usually a rear loader and a roll off dumpster there. So, we'll take care of both of them. Mike, I got one other thing. I always like when you come up because I know you got a menu of services you offer for a price to the public. Correct. So you can pay a little bit extra and get the um, get your guys to come bring the trash can to the road if you're not physically able. Is that correct? correct. Is that what I understand? Within a certain distance. Okay. Well, what's the distance? Um, it's a hundred feet from okay. the roadside. Okay. Uh, we've had in the past where we had couldn't get down to it. You know, mm -hmm. if it's a half mile down into your house, which some of them are. But and I just, just like I just want you to explain the services that you offer, and you know, so it's a simple solution. So, correct for some people. We we offer uh, we can go out and do a bulk pickup with the grapple truck, and that costs one hundred and fifty dollars an hour, and then you pay your disposal. And generally, it don't take but an hour to get there and do it. Depends on where you're at from the location. Um, we offer that. We offer backdoor services. What you're talking about costs a little extra. And we generally want to do that for the handicapped and people that are elderly and can't do it. And sometimes the rental places take advantage of that because they, they can pay that little extra. And we go up to the house and bring it out and bring it back. So when they're not there, we take care of them. Uh, bear latches. I've, I've been told the bears are coming back. We do offer the bear latches. Um, And yard debris. Well, we pick up in the city yard debris every day. And then in the county, if you're signed up for yard debris, you call in and we'll get work orders and we schedule them to go out and pick them up. And that's once a month, and it's usually about two yards that we get at a time. Well, in general. 
Most of the time, it's more than that. Uh, any, any more questions, Commissioner? Y'all got any questions? All right, thank you, sir. We appreciate thank it. Y'all. Thank y'all. Yes, yes, sir. Take care. Yeah, you, you still have the floor, Stan. That's all I've got this time, Mr. Chairman. All right, Sheriff, you got anything? No, sir, I'm good. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. All right, moving on down the board business. Uh, Commissioner Husband, you want to go first? Yes, sir. I'll be happy to. Thank you, sir. Um, first of all, I'd like to say uh, on April 22nd at 5 Eastern, I would like to do a um, town hall meeting at Beacon Hill at Veterans Park. Um, so I'd like to get that out there. Um, if 5 Eastern works for Mr. Hammond, I would be good with that. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, so I'd like to put that out there today. I'd like to check with Clay on, I know we're going to open bids later for Overstreet, so I just want to check on that environmental review portion. It's supposed to be submitted to the state next week through our consultant, and then that starts, you know, their review process. They get so many days to review it, and then we have to advertise it for so many days for public comment. So it kind of starts the process. So we're, we're a couple months out, but it still should line up pretty well if we get these bids. I mean, we've got to review them and get a contractor signed up anyhow. So a couple of months out still. Thank you very much. Um, update on Highway 71 project. We are going to, or they're going to start the, I talked to the contractor on Friday. They're going to start that on April 1st. I know it's been kicked down the, can has been kicked down the street a little bit on that one, but they are going to start on April 1st. They've delayed that because of spring break. So that's the reason for that. That will be 24 hours, 24 uh, hour day work for about a week there that 71, it won't be shut down. There'll be major delays. Uh, so please expect that for sure. Um, we uh, just an update on all of the public work projects we have going. Um, thank you to Mark. He's always very receptive to these. Um, we've received the blue reflective pavement markers and they're being installed all over the county. Uh, Honeyville signs have been installed from a arduous process from DOT. Uh, we've got the striping done and the signs are installed now. So that was great news there. They were actually installed before, uh, opening day, which went very well at, Honey, at Honeyville Park. Um, the, I wanted to ask Mark if we could paint the post on the um, Wetapo transfer station. There, I could have a like, white sign with wood posts. It would look really good if they would be just painted white to me. I mean, so that's all right with the board, but um, wouldn't be much. <coughs> We're going to paint it whatever color you want to paint it. Just white. Yes, sir. Just white. Yeah, just white. That's all right. Yes, sir. Um, we're continuing to work on multiple drainage issues throughout. And, Mark, thank you for working. I saw the guys working on the Hall's Bottom Ditch. So that worked out good. And that's, I'd rather be proactive than reactive on that for sure. Good time of year. Um, Sylvia, thank you for installing the lights on the 22 sign. Came by there Saturday and uh, looked really good. Might want to move move them in a little bit if we can adjust those lights so it shines on the Gulf County part. It's kind of shining down the sides of it there. So um, that would be really good. I appreciate that. And then also just a reminder for the Honeyville Park press box and the uh, signs on the Cape as well. Those signs are, some of them are, some look really good and some need a little back paint on the backdrop paint on them. Um, I, I attended the annual golf course meeting. Uh, Jordan did a great <coughs> job with his presentation, um, and the course keeps looking better and better and better. I wanted to ask, I talked to the sheriff earlier, or late, late last week, and I wanted to ask the board if it would be okay if we just did a basically a little spruce up of the sheriff's office building that we have there on 71. As you come into town, it's just kind of looking a little bit rough. Um, wouldn't take a whole lot, maybe just a fresh coat of paint and maybe some flower bed work or something like that, but that would be something that we would need to, to look at, in my opinion, as kind of the first thing you see as you come in the wee wall. So uh, we'd like to, I'd like to ask for that. I have no problem with that. That sounds good. Okay. Um, Mr. Raymond, I wanted to ask you on the Dalkeith Fire Department roof, um, have you got the existing portion sealed yet? I have not. I okay. was waiting on the contractor to complete his addition. Okay. And, uh, I, I think they've heard. got that. I don't know. I haven't got an update on his where he's at with it, but I wasn't going to 
Okay, I think they've got that waterproofing done, but if you don't mind, will you just check with Trip and see, I think that, that overlap of that metal on the roof is done. I think the uh, screws just need that cool seal on the, on the okay. existing portion of the building. That would be right. The, the roof is complete now. Okay, good deal. Okay. That'll be all, right. all right, thank you very much. Um, I also want, we had an employee uh, at the county get in an accident a couple Fridays ago. I just wanted to say thank you for Michael for helping him. Uh, I think you got him a chair. You and Miss Carrie got him a chair, so thank you all for, for doing that. I did get a phone call. I greatly appreciated that, so it helped him out a lot. Uh, but Ronald Mahan got in an accident, and I just want to hope him, get him some well wishes, and hope he gets better soon. The last thing I have is uh, if Jeremy has an update for us on the potential fire tax. Sure, Commissioners. Um, just to follow up on our last discussion, I've uh, been working with the Department of Revenue representatives on trying to explore what vehicle we can explore to come up with the fire assessment. Um, and speaking with the Commissioner, there are other uh, municipalities and counties that have come up with um, assessments that they can put out there through a referendum. Um, the vehicles right now that exist is our TDC tax, which we have maxed out. We're putting back on the referendum in the fall in the general election ballot for the community to vote whether they wish to continue to assess that additional penny for the fifth penny. And obviously the statute is very clear on what we can and cannot use that fifth penny for. In addition to that, we have our discretionary tax in, in, in Gulf County, as we do in many of the small rural counties. Um, half, half of that one penny right now on the sales tax is pledged towards Sacred Heart or Ascension Health and the other is to our road bond obligations. So those monies are, for the most part, allocated. Um, for us to go out and look at other discretionary taxes, it would be a consideration for this commission to put a discretionary tax and put it on a referendum in a general election ballot. Um, short of that, there are another, there's not an opportunity for us to put a flat dollar surcharge on a rental independent of the county. So the sales tax would be the vehicle in which we could come up with that uh, fire protection um, and then the only, only other option, obviously, as I indicated, is what the other communities have done with this fire assessment, which would also be a vote of the public. Um, so that would be a consideration for you all. If you wish to do that, um, I'll come back with a legal memorandum and the steps in which you would accomplish that. You would pass that resolution, I would introduce it through an ordinance form, and then you'd put it on a ballot election in the fall. Um, and so as I've spoken with Commissioner Husband, I would encourage each of the commissioners to talk with myself and the administrator one-on-one, -on -one, understand the steps that are necessary to do that. Um, and then if you start those wheels in motion, obviously it would move towards the fall in our November and our general election where you put that to the public to vote something of that nature through. Currently we have a resolution from the school board. Um, they just voted through that they wanna have that on the ballot. So that language will be through the supervisor of elections this fall. One general election ballot referendum for the school tax. And also you've already voted through the tourist development council. So there's two referendums that'll be in the fall for the public to consider. And then this would be something of that nature, but it'd be a third ballot. Um, but again, I'd encourage each of the commissioners to talk with us about that, and then we can come back and decide whether or not you wish to start that process. But it'll ultimately be a, a decision of the electorate. So that would be a, a sales tax? It's a discretionary tax. Yeah. It's correct under the statute. Um, so that, that is not something specific, Commissioner, to your question and to the point of the community. I know. Sylvie's gotten some questions about it. It's not gonna be the tourists or the heads and beds. It'll be you, me, everyone in this room. Um, when you purchase, it comes to your sales. Okay, I, I was doing some, I talked to some folks yesterday, did some research yesterday as well. Um, I think in the next legislative session, there's gonna be a bill proposed for the ability, it's gonna be maybe a possible vehicle for us to, to use but I think there's a bill proposed, and I know, if you don't mind, do some research on it. Uh, you're way better at that than I am. But the bill set states, if I am understanding correctly, that there's a possibility, and it's, it obviously has to pass, um, but there's a possibility that the TDC taxes could be used for infrastructure. So if that maybe could we do some research on that as well? Yeah, and I appreciate you and mentioned that to me. Um, we, we certainly can and we will. I know that the last few years they've looked at the tourist development tax throughout the state and they've introduced various versions of language for public safety, law enforcement, and now infrastructure. Um, I think the small rural counties that have these TDC taxes have acknowledged and I think hopefully in Tallahassee they see that there's a demand or a need to expand the use of these funds 
and the impact it has when we go from 13,000 walking the streets to 26,000 on any given week in the summertime. That has a significant strain on all the civil services. So I'll certainly look into it. We'll come back and we can continue that dialogue. I'd be happy to. Yeah, I think in that bill, we just need to add at the end of it four counties of critical economic concern. Sure. And sure. I think that would get us where we need I to agree. be if it, if it passes. But that would be that certainly okay. happy to do it, Commissioner. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. You good? Um, the only other thing I have is um, I think Commissioner Rich was working with some folks on the pickleball courts. I don't know if he wants to bring that up. I'll be happy the city, to talk about it. The city called it. me Friday, so I sure. don't know if you were going to bring that up or not. Sure. I'll be happy to. to. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, I did have a call from a constituent uh, of ours to look at the possibility of uh, using some of the um, tennis courts there at T.O. James Park. So they got the measurements and looked, and anyway, got a great facility there, but it needs a little bit better minor repair, so we're going to need to uh, try to help them do the patchwork, and then they're going to reconfigure it, and uh, it's going to be a nice facility once we get it completed. But anyway, so working with Mr. Johnny Paul there at the, at the city commission is who it is, and, and uh, so anyway, we just need to help them out a little bit with our uh, knowledge and a little bit of labor and probably a little bit of money. But uh, we just want to make that a nice facility. It's a growing sport, as you know. And um, for Christmas, maybe um, we'll pitch in and get Mr. Hammond a uh, pickleball paddle there. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, um, on the next thing, this past Saturday, we had a uh, community Easter egg hunt at Honeyville. And a uh, big turnout, despite the weather. Probably uh, around 150, 200 kids, you know. Great turnout, great event. And... Um, Everybody was happy, all smiles. So it was a really good event. And then um, week before that, we had an open day of uh, baseball and softball at both fields, T.L. James and Honeyville. The facilities looked great, and uh, everybody was having a good time. And um, we identified a few things that need to be fixed, tuned up to get it 100%. But uh, Raymond and um, the TDC staff are working on those to get those complete. So anyway, I'm sure they will. And uh, just a great day. Good weather, so good turnout. And um, next thing, uh, Clay, I want to ask about the bridge on North Bass at North part of District 1 up there. Tell me where we're at on that, please, sir. I'm actually waiting on an update from Dewberry, but when we met with them uh, Monday, they felt like the design, they were wrapping up the design, and uh, we can get it, get it advertised to get that part of it built, and then we can move the bridge up there and set the bridge, the one we took off of uh, okay. Charles. So you got any kind of timeline there? Sooner than two, later, but two, I'll get you, two, I'll get three, you something two, specific, three but sooner than later. Yes. Okay, I got you. All right, good deal. All right, appreciate it. Thank you. That's all I have, sir. Okay. All right. Commissioner, I, I love the way you I say just a little bit of help. Uh, if we could get, if you want to get a motion to, I have, I've, I have identified since that's what the city requested, $40,000 to, uh, to do this little tiny renovation to well, their I thought it was a minor repair first. We're going all the way. It was our money, their labor, I think, is what we've talked about. So if that's – I can't spend that much without board approval. So if, all right. Well, I want to make a motion do whatever it takes to make it nice, and let's do it right in one time for for the future, and it lasts a long time. All right. I got a motion by Commissioner uh, So how much money you got? Rich. 40. 40,000? 4 zero. Yeah. I'll second. To spend forty thousand to get this facility, which up. is about half. I mean, we put in fifty, and the city of Saint Joe put in fifty to do their additional deal. This is a renovation, not from scratch, so it's in line. I think the forty number. Yes, sir. I met with them on Friday, uh, basically just to give you a little his history here. Uh, it's basically a one twenty by one twenty area. There's two tennis courts there now. More or less, they're going to end up with one full tennis court and four pickleball courts and the city's willing to do the labor. And I think, Mark, we're gonna need a load of lime rock. I met with them on how to saw cut the pavement and tell them exactly how to do it, or told them what to do and how to do it. And uh, David Paul said he would be willing to do that. Uh, they have the equipment to do it themselves, so if they could just drop a load of lime rock off at the corner of the fence, he'll take the fence down and get that lime rock in there once he does the saw cuts and take care of all those, and he'll raise that those cracked up areas <clears throat> up to the level of the asphalt and then we can just come in and, and pave it. 
pavement worked out to be about twenty thousand dollars. So I just doubled that number of my estimate, just in my quick estimate. But it shouldn't. I think forty thousand. They'll need some hardware, paddle, pickleball, paddle Nets. holders. Uh, I'm not sure the terminology exactly, but I'm not a pickleball player. But um, that's with that. I think it'll be around forty thousand dollars. Good. Yes, sir. Good. If, right. if everybody saw the tournament they had, what was it last week that the turtle folks put on? That was uh, unbelievable. Yeah, it was, it was unbelievable. Big. Yeah. So, and we don't have a pickleball court on the north end, yeah, so that it makes sense. It makes sense. And they've got lights and ability to to use the lights throughout the year, so I think we will. Plenty used. of parking. Plenty of parking. I agree. It's going to be utilized. You build it, they'll use it. Uh, all right, so we got a motion by Commissioner Rich to spend 40000 on the pickleball uh, in, in, in conjunction with the city of uh, We Will Hit You. Second by Commissioner Husband. Any further board discussion? Uh, I think Commissioner Husband, you second it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. Any? A question to amount, so, yeah. All right, any further board discussion? All right, anyone in the public? Questions, concerns? All right, any opposition to the motion? All right, motion passed 5 and 0. All right, Commissioner Rich, you done? You, yes, sir. You good? No. Commissioner Huff, you had something? Well, I got, oh, I got okay. one more thing. Yes, sir. I, I was going to mark up that we had, we had two floods in one month up there, and we had some shoulder damage. And I know they did a lot of work around. Are y'all done with that? And kind of give us an update, please. So, where the water comes across the road in our area and on um, the dam road down near Gaskin Park. The right side of the road on Gaskin Park and the left side of the road on Iowa, where the water comes across, we had shoulder damage. It wasn't super substantial, didn't impact the asphalt, but we went back and top coated all that, and getting ready. And if we don't have any more floods, grass will be growing on it for summertime. Okay, appreciate you doing that. Take care of it for us. Mr. Husband, you had something else? That's, that was, I just want to make sure we follow up on that pickleball. Okay. All right. Commissioner Farrell? Yes. Um, I'd like to re reiterate what uh, uh, David Rich said about the Easter egg hunt. It was absolutely fantastic. Uh, a lot of kids out there. And um, out there with the kids, you see the fire truck pull up. You're like, oh, this is great. The kid's going to be able to see the fire truck. The fire truck ran right past us, <laughs> went to the Honeyville uh, Rec Center, and they had a fire. <laughs> So hopefully Just it wasn't smoke. too bad. Yeah, yeah. So, but anyway, it was. It was quite eventful. They enjoyed it anyway. Um, also, I want to tell you, the sheriff. I appreciate all you did during spring break, and we know we got two more weeks coming up. I know we had a couple of issues that were handled right. Um, the people in Highland View, I ask again, like I did last month, for their patience as we, you know, work through all this uh, weather and getting this asphalt down. And I think. Everybody would be very pleased at the end result, and um, it's excited to be able to get that uh, project underway and done. I look forward to doing uh, St. Joe Beach. Also, the uh, the golf course meeting, I thought, like Commissioner Husband said, was absolutely fantastic. I mean, I'm not a golf player, but I do understand, you know, what they're trying to do, and I think Jordan's doing a fantastic job, him and his team. I think they're doing great. Um, other thing I'd like to thank, you know, Jack and uh, uh, Mark for all the work doing the, on that water up at Gulf Air. I went up there several times. I've talked to a couple of the, the homeowners, and I'm glad we've rectified that, and I appreciate y'all's time and effort on that. Uh, the other thing, uh, thanks, Sylvia, for helping out with the parks, and we're still working on the sign for Howard's Creek and we'll, uh, a couple painting projects, and as soon as the water comes down, be back on that boat ramp. Um, Thank Mark for checking that ditch for me yesterday. That we, I talked to him last night. Uh, the only other thing I've got is I was talking to the chief uh, Highland View about doing something with their building. He said, before you paint anything, can I get my roof fixed? So if we could go up there and take a look at it. Uh, Raymond and I would be happy to go up there with you and take a look at it. He said he's still got a leak in his uh, roof. If you just check on that, I'd appreciate it. Um, Was that Highland View or Howard's Creek? I mean, Howard's Creek, okay. excuse me, I'm sorry. And uh, I think that's all I've got. Uh, just looking forward to getting the uh, road started in 
St. Joe Beach as well. Thank you. All right. Yes, sir. All right, Commissioner McCall. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I uh, had a few things here. Uh, get Clay to give me an update on, I think we got it Madison back open, had it closed most of the week, and had they projects. Did. Tell they, us. They did. They were able to get in there during spring break and do the intersection work, um, and so traffic's back open there, and they're waiting on the rest of the storm structures to be delivered so they can continue the pipe work down uh, towards Welton. So we're going all the way to Welton with the pipe, mm -hmm. and then we're going to and then the whole road and pave the road, yeah. Okay. Mill and pave it. How about timing on paving Madison? Any idea? Oh. Well, it'll be after that storm works. So okay. So I don't know when the structures are coming, but okay. they're waiting on them. Okay. Uh, Jones Homestead, uh, Rutherford Loop. I know we let the contract on that. Uh, they were wanting to get started uh, mid April, but we really need to get the waterline folks. You've seen the stakes and the locates out there. We really need them to get out of the way first before we come in and widen because we're widening the road. Doing okay. work like that. So. Uh, they're going to start next week, and they're going to start in Jones Homestead and work their way towards 98 to get out of the way, and then uh, road contractor can get started after that. So I assume you know like mid May probably is all we're looking at. Okay. It shouldn't be that okay. big of a delay. And and that's that. I saw all the locates. I've had a bunch of calls on that. People, you know, think it's something, you know, crazy. But uh, that's that's for the new water lines coming from water plant. Uh, bypass C30 to 98. Have we had any movement on that? Uh, it it's in design. I mean, I think they're getting closer on it. Uh, the survey's done. Uh, they've got the wetlands, and uh, we even talked. They called me last week. We had a good discussion about the stormwater and how we need to handle that. So uh, I, I expect it's closer to being finished in terms of the design, so we can get it advertised. I mean, we got to get permits too, but we can kind of do those in conjunction as they're getting permits. We can we can get it uh, advertised for construction. Okay. I uh, thought we had a great meeting yesterday on the Indian Pass sewer. Uh, I know we're going to schedule another workshop, and uh, we all still have some questions, but I think I think we had a good meeting uh, on that issue. So, so uh, uh, see, I think we got the signs done at Salinas and Cape Palms look look a lot better, and I appreciate that. And uh, Something I hadn't asked about in a while, Indian Pass Road elevation. Are we still moving forward? We're going to raise that. Where are we at on? We are. So we're, um, by the end of this month, I'll have the 100% design documents, and we're going to, that'll get submitted to the HMGP folks, and it'll go through another review process with them. But the, we're also teaming with DOT on that to make that project whole, and DOT's money becomes available. Uh, the right-of-way acquisition money becomes available in July of next year. So we're still you know, a year out, but we also still got to get our permits. And so that's part of that process too. And, and it's just a unfortunate situation for us, but there's a, something called a 404 permitting thing that the federal government has overruled the state of Florida and, and being able to, to allow the state of Florida to handle that part of the permitting. So it's anyhow, all that timing, it sounds like it's a long way out to wait on the money, but we've still got some things to get done before then. So I don't, I think it's going to line up pretty well with, um, when the money's available versus, you know, when we're ready to go. But the in terms of the design, it'll be finished by the end of this month. Okay. Sounds good. Uh, let me ask you about this. They'll shoot me if I don't. But the offshore barriers, are we still on track for? We are, and I'm expecting, I saw an email last week, uh, I'm expecting the draft um, or the public notice from DEP to come out April 8th, and that kind of starts their clock to issuing it. And, and yeah, the Army Corps is still on track. I, I feel good about our timeline on that still. Okay. And uh, you also had uh, in the consent agenda today, there was uh, approval to apply for some more funding through a uh, NIFWIF grant, which we've applied for in the past and we just hadn't got it. So we're going, we're going, like I said, every opportunity that comes up to get more money for that project, we're, we're applying for it. Okay. Sounds good. Uh, last thing I have, uh, we're still on going with the NOAA grant on Salinas Park uh, reforestation. So you want yes, to talk about we, that a minute? We had a, uh, um, Last week or a couple of weeks ago, we had an update phone call with a consultant that's working on. Um, so there's there's two, there's kind of two things on that. We've got the Suns Group, which um, we've been working with for, I don't know, three or four years on a plan for that park. And they've got some of their funding that's not costing us anything. And so a couple of weeks ago, we had an update with their consultant. And that's who's been out there surveying the trees. Uh, you see the ribbons around all the trees so they can get a good tree. And so they're going to come back with, um, you know, a plan of planting plan and kind of what parts, what species will grow well and what parts of the park and let us look at that. And then they don't have money for construction. So we've applied to NOAA 
to get money for construction for that. And so that'll include putting back the dune, putting more trees, landscaping, irrigation, that kind of thing to get that part back where we all want it to be. So th both of those are still moving forward. Yes, sir. Okay, sounds good. Uh, Mark, I appreciate I know you've been working on, we had uh, some flooding issues, or not flooding, but drainage issues at Indian Pass. And I know we've taken a look at some of that and you, you're working on that. So I appreciate that. So that's all I have, Mr. Chairman. So. Good, okay. All right, um, only, I've got a couple things I want to ask. Um, in reference to, I, I think we already got it signed by the city, the interlocal agreement for the career source and the uh, museum work. Did we? S they have it. I don't, we, we don't have an executed deal, but they have it. The city does have it. Okay. Also, uh, if we could, but they have it, could, could we do one? Because I want to give a little... Uh, the tender love and care also to the stack house could we do one for uh, the stack house I, th I got a little parks money and and I don't think it needs much but we can do an interlocal agreement to go in there and, um, and kind of touch up whatever needs to be touched up so we can get that place ready for the summer also um, my, my, my other question is I know we're still in a um, Sherry gave me some good news that we we are we finally got one of the paperwork uh, signed in reference to the Washington grant. Um, so I'm assuming we are, we're probably on hold until the environmental study gets done. Yes, sir. So we have executed that contract. Um, so that will start that process. Um, once the environmental and that, I don't remember the days on that, but that, that is a bit of a lengthy process. Once that is then submitted, then we'll get next step. So, um, we do have executed contracts, so that's further than we were. That's, that's right. That's right. That's true. All right. Thank you, ma'am. And, my, and Michael, my, my, I got a question for you in reference to, in reference to roads. What would be the next time we maybe can add roads to, um, to be paved? There are no plans right now to do a road project, but if the board has a specific road, okay. we have some secondary road and bridge money, uh, but. To do a big project, we'd have to do a new road bond. Okay. All right. I appreciate it. Also, now, again, road, that, road. again, that's countywide. We have opportunities a couple times a year to apply for scrap and scop and some of these other projects, which we always do. The board right, votes right. on. We've got five pending right now. And, and I don't want to speak for them, but I'm pretty sure the city got um, – appropriation last year for a road paving project and it seemed like it was a good chunk of money it it six or seven million or something so I, I don't know who, what all's on their list but I mean it's something we can certainly ask them okay and they and they both participate they don't always get funded the city we will uh, ask for roads the last couple times the city of St. Joe got a road funded with uh, I forgot what it was long part of that Madison. yeah and Madison this last yeah. time was a smaller one but they had a longer road and I can't remember what it was it was either Garrison or, or Long that they co-opted okay. but just like Clay said, they've got a pretty big chunk of roads that they're going to do in the okay. city of Port St. Joe, but I'm not familiar with which roads it's going to be. Okay. All right. Appreciate it. Also, um, the the space at the, and we're going back to, I'm going to talk about the health department. Um, Ms. Monica Barfield from uh, New Horizon Primary Care has moved into the, uh, the the open space that we was renting out to Pancare, so she will be providing services now at the uh, at our old at the at the health department, but on the pancare side. So I just want to make sure I put that out there. Also, I asked Mr. Eddie Fields to come here. He's representing the senior citizens, um, and I want him to come forward. Um, he called me yesterday in reference to in reference to some concerns in reference to funding um, issue that they have been having um, from another agency. So, Mr. Fields, you come on up, state your name and who you represent for the record, please. And, Please share that information with the commissioners. Uh, good morning, everybody. My name is Eddie Fields. I'm the executive director for the Gulf County Senior Citizen Center. And uh, as Commissioner Quinn stated, I spoke with him on yesterday. I tried to, we we're trying to work with Liberty County. Liberty County received our request for proposal for Gulf County, which I definitely don't agree with. Prior to me taking on the position, they received the Community Care for the Elderly Grant, which uh, I stated was four hundred and some thousand dollar grant. They said I misquote that, and they said it's around about three hundred sixty thousand dollars. That's quite a bit of money for uh, the citizens of Gulf County. 
We thank you for your funding that's helping support the center because it's been very generous. We're averaging 150 congregate meals, which is in-house meals at both sites. We're averaging 190 transportation trips back and forth to the center. Also field trips that we take them to Walmart, uh, the Dollar Store, Golden Corral, to get them out of their household. I've heard so many times that they said the walls are closing in on them when they just sitting there at that house. Come on out to the Senior Citizen Center. Uh, Liberty County has cut us back with uh, home care for the elderly to 18 hours, which is the, the clients get two hours, well, four hours per week, two hours each visit, okay? We have a total of five clients right now, and we're trying to add that up. Liberty County has cut us back to 18 hours. That's nine hours in Weewalk. That's nine hours in Port St. Joe which I feel is a very ridiculous number. We are partnered with Covenant Hospice, Hospice to do private care, and they're going to really help us out with that. I'm in discussion with Ms. Lisa Bell right now to get this program on the road. We're trying to add some additional programs to add funding to continue to help the clients in Gulf County. We just had recently had a fish fry. The fish fry was a fundraiser to help out with funding. And, but the, the fish fry mainly was to gain community support. We had quite a few people coming on out doing pickleball tournament, came over and we, we raised quite a bit of money there to keep us above uh, uh, water there. And all I could do is say, I thank God for the blessing that we received from day one. I began in February 22. It was a rough beginning, walking into something that I got to figure out how to fix this. And so we fixing it, but with Liberty steady pulling funding, steady pulling hours, they've shown that they don't care anything about the clients. They're just concerned about paperwork. That don't sit well with me because I've been doing this for quite some time. I used to sit on the area agency board in Tallahassee. I stayed on that board so long I rose up to become the president. So I know how this should work. You take care of the people in your county. I came down several times to make sure we can get this working for the clients in Gulf County. Uh, now that I'm here and I can really see at the ground level what's going on, but I've also still been out there working with the Christian Community Development Fund, so I know the needs of the clients in Gulf County. We go in their homes, we do repairs, the money from the community care for the elderly grant, they do handicap ramps, several other things that they can get out of this grant, grant to help your constituents. Your constituents need more help, I feel, because with nine hours and nine hours in Port the, 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 the home maker services is cut. One client just recently, last week, said she need more services. Okay, we're gonna continue to give her the services and what we do we pull from the pool of funding that you're giving us in order to do that versus the funding that we're receiving from the state through Liberty County. Liberty County, to go, I guess, negative with this, which is a very sad story to me, we had a client on Cape San Blast. I don't want to call the client's name, but anyway, we were servicing those clients. They called us and they said that they wanted some food. Oh, okay, sure, we, we'll give you some food, no problem. And by researching, we found out you're on a larger program, which is Community Care for the Elderly. More funding is there, but we pull it from the Older Americans Act program that we have, which recently fell upon the Liberty County. Liberty County stated that we could go ahead and take care of some clients from the Older Americans Act. We took care of these clients, and it, the bill ran up to $990. Later, they came back and said that we can't do it. Hold your thought right there. Can I get a motion to extend? So moved. Motion by Commissioner Farrell. Second. Second by Commissioner McCrone. Any opposition? Motion passed five and no. Go ahead. We fed those clients, and we got in contact with Liberty and told them that what we were doing. They informed us that they, they are under the Community Care for the Elderly Program. Okay, no one is going there. The client told us no one is coming there to see them. Finally, after we pushed it a little bit, they sent a, a, a case manager there 
But when the case manager arrived, the case manager was so mean to those clients, they said they did not want them to come back anymore. So we still continue to feed them out of a program they should have been fed from another program that Liberty County has. Okay, to get to the sad part of the story, uh, the gentleman's wife passed away at first, okay? Got with Liberty County, told them what was going on. Liberty County kind of brushed it off as to say the lady was drunk. She probably failed and hurt herself. No, that's not the case. Where are you getting your information from if you don't go there? Okay, we went back and forth with that. We continue to feed the people. Okay, later, I think after the gentleman's wife passed, about a month and a half later, he passed. So we had two clients that we were servicing that Liberty should have been servicing, and they just, just didn't care. I'm trying to pick my words carefully. They just did not care. We love our clients. We're going to take care of those clients. Whatever, what, whatever we have to do to do that, that's what we plan to continue to do. We plan to continue fundraising. We plan to just reach out. And, and the main thing is reaching out to the community because we ran into so many people said that they didn't know that senior citizen center was there. I've been going out of, in and out of that center since Jerry Stucco was there. I learned a lot from Jerry Stucco. He was a mentor and he cared about the people in Gulf County. So that's what I plan to continue to do. I drafted a letter to give to you all to kind of go over some of the things that I've discussed because I didn't want to stay up here all day and end up repeating myself. But we, we need your continued support. Uh, whatever you can do to continue to help us because the funding is tremendous and it just keeps us going. And right now, we're just going to keep pumping at it until we just get everything right at the Senior Citizen Center that they feel is not right. But we're going to continue to serve the people that's hungry because they definitely come to us and say they are hungry. We're going And the volunteers, I must speak up of our volunteer services. We have volunteers that come every day like they're going to work, okay? We have one room there. When I walked into this room, Paper was all over the floor and everything. One of our volunteers, this little miss sitting right back there, she came in and straightened that room up for us. Now I got to find some pictures to put in there and dress it up. So in that, i end this. If I can approach and give you all these letters. Yes, sir. Any question for Mr. Fields, our commissioners? Mr. Fields, hang up right there by the microphone. I think we might have a couple. Of so, I want to I want to, I want to ask a couple of questions and 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 see if I'm right to see what the board can do because we we beat this around because this this ran off the rails before you got there the way I understand it, and y'all lost a grant and maybe a couple grants. Who is the state agency that the grant comes from? Because I understand we're, we're talking about I'm assuming Liberty County Senior Citizens, not Liberty County. Board of County Commissioners, it's running through them from the state agency, is that it, correct? It, it's coming from Area Agency on Aging in okay. Tallahassee. Area Agency Area on Aging. Area Agency on Aging, uh, they approved the request for proposal. They awarded it to Liberty County. Okay, Liberty County is not through the commission, it's, it's just through the Senior Citizen okay. Center there. The, the director, one of their She's not a case manager. Financial officers, they budget what they want us to have. It's impossible to operate that way. It's basically impossible. But, but like I said, based on the funding we received from the county, we received funding from the city, many donations. I mean, people heard about what we're trying to do. So the donations have poof, really popped up there, and that's what's really keeping us afloat. And when you're working with people that don't care about the clients, this is not their county. Their That's county right. is Liberty County. I understand. So, so how do we, they, they had a federal grant and a state grant. Do they administer both of them? They administer okay. both. Okay. So how, when, when is it open again, and how does the county help put pressure on area, aging, uh, area agency on aging to take your proposal again? I understand you all proposed, may have proposed late, again, before you got there. 
and lost that contract, when is it up again? And because there's no need in us arguing with Liberty County because that's not going anywhere. We need to go straight to the source of the funding exactly. and get y'all back where the funding goes directly to the senior citizens to Guff County and not through another county's right. senior citizens. Again, not the county commission. This goes through their nonprofit organization. Is right. that correct? Right. Right. Do, do, do we know when that opens back we, up? We are looking at right about now, I think maybe two two more years for the uh, uh, CCE grant. We're looking right at about two and a half, maybe three years with the Old Americans Act grant because we just lost that. We lost that by the way I was informed. One sheet of paper that wasn't in there, after five thousand that's at least two, three inches thick. Okay. Can you get me your contact with area agency, I sure and can. and then we'll we can work that angle if that works. Sounds good. Okay. Sounds good. Yeah. I feel they definitely need area agency definitely need to be contacted to just question them on how they're operating this. Uh, we submitted uh, uh, an appeal that that was really got the fellas in there because how I found out we lost the uh, request for proposal for the OAA grant, it was on the website for every agency. We found this out that afternoon. I've never officially received a letter saying that we were denied. You have three working days after that is presented, I, I uh, sent in a request for the appeal on that Monday, which should have been that Wednesday. Once I submitted that, you had to submit the funding to do that, they sent it right back to me, told me that we couldn't appeal, there was no appeal. I have up to that Wednesday to do that. I also sent a letter along with the check to find out why. I haven't found out why as of this date. I've never received a letter stating why anything. They went into a non-communicative non mode. I'll state that, and they don't communicate with me as of this day. They communicate with uh, Liberty County because we're a subcontractor upon the Liberty County. Okay. All right. Any other questions? Got any questions, Commissioner? All right. We appreciate it, Mr. Fields. Well, I thank you all yes, for sir. your yes, time sir. and thank you for listening. You going to make sure we get that contact information now? I sure will. Okay. Yes, sir. Appreciate it. All right. All right. Moving on down to item uh, six, bid opening. Bid number 232409, Overstreet Roadway. Improvements. Mr. Chairman, we have four bids this morning. Uh, bid number 2324-09, Overstreet Roadway Improvements. We have C.W. Roberts Contracting, Inc., American Sand and Asphalt Paving, Gulf Coast Utility Contractors, and Roberts and Roberts, Inc. All right. Thank you, ma'am. We'll come back to you. All right, moving on down to item seven, public hearings. Mr. Crane. Yes, sir. Good morning, Chairman, Commissioners. Um, the first item that we have is an ordinance for a small-scale map amendment for parcel ID 03019-000R. Um, in February 19th, uh, the PDRB had uh, heard this case for a, a land use change small scale map amendment for 43.62 acres from agricultural to residential. Uh, they gave the recommendation uh, 5 and 0 to approve this. Um, and on February 27th, uh, this commission uh, voted to approve this land use change. And so we'll just be ratifying that by ordinance. This will be the first reading and come back with a second reading next month. And I'll read it by title if that's okay. Yes, sir. An ordinance amending the comprehensive plan of Gulf County, Florida, by and through procedures required for small-scale land use map amendment pursuant to statute uh, uh, pursuant to authority under Florida Statute 163.3187 and Fl Florida Statute 125, specifically amending Parcel ID 03019-000R. Section 7, Township 8, South Range 10 West, 43.62 acres, Gulf County, Florida, from agricultural to re residential, providing for an effective date. All right, thank you, sir. Any questions, Commissioners? Mr. Chairman, I'm going to need to abstain on this one due to work on the project. Okay, thank you, sir. All right, open to the public. Anyone in the public any questions or concerns in reference to this amendment? 
questions or concerns, open to the public. Any staff members, any questions or concerns? All right, anyone in the public, questions or concerns? All right, board members, questions, no, no concerns? All right, close to the public. Yes, sir, and once, just, once again, this is just the first reading and we will have a second reading of this, so we don't require a vote on this one uh, this month, so. Still have the floor. All right, the second, uh, Ordinance is also for a small scale map amendment of uh, parcel ID 02652000R. Uh, the PDRB had their meeting on January 15th with a recommendation of 3 and 0 to approve this land use change from residential to mixed commercial residential. It's 0.41 acres on the north end of Gulf County. Uh, this commission heard this uh, land use change on January the 23rd. We had a first reading of this ordinance last month at your regular meeting. And uh, this will be the second reading and uh, final vote for this ordinance that I'll also read by title. Yes, sir. Go ahead. An ordinance amending the comprehensive plan of Gulf County, Florida by and through procedures required for small scale land use map amendment pursuant to authority under Florida Statute 163.3187 and Florida Statute 125, specifically amending parcel ID 02652-000R. Section 36, Township 4, South Range 10 West. It's 0 .41 acres in Gulf County, Florida, from residential to mixed commercial residential, providing for an effective date. All right, thank you, sir. Any commissioners, any questions or concerns in reference to this amendment? All right, anyone, all right open to the public. Anyone in the public with any questions or concerns? Open to the public. Questions or concerns? Staff members, any questions or concerns in reference to this one? Amendment? All right. Anyone in the public? All right. All right. What's the wishes of the board? Move, Move to, to approve. approve. All right. Got a motion by Commissioner Farrell. Second. Second by Commissioner Rich. Any further board discussion? All right. Anyone in the public on this? All right. Any opposition to the motion? All right, motion passed five and zero. All right, you still have the floor, Mr. Crane. All right, the last ordinance that we have is a uh, ordinance for uh, land development regulations. Uh, specifically, we had been asked to uh, review the restaurant parking uh, requirements, and uh, we had a meeting. Um, the PDRB had a meeting on this on January twenty third. Uh, and voted three and zero to recommend approving. Uh, this board had their uh, a meeting on February twenty seventh. Uh, the first reading of this ordinance was on uh, February twenty seventh, uh, and then this is specifically. There's a couple items on here uh, where the the new wording in our LDR will change the restaurant parking to one space for every one hundred square feet of gross floor area, or one space per four seats, whichever results in a greater number of spaces. The second part of this ordinance would be just identifying what the county uh, considers to be high quality wetlands as far as setbacks go. Uh, there was some issues that I've discussed with several people. We're not trying to get into the environmentalist business and define what's high quality and what's low quality. It's just identifying the high quality wetlands that we impose a setback on in our LDR. Um, and that the new portion of that will read, um, that there is no setback from any wetland other than high quality wetlands the gulf of mexico st joseph bay indian pass lagoon and all connecting waterways tidally controlled high quality wetland setbacks are 50 feet inland high quality wetlands apalachicola river chipola river Witapo creek and all connecting uh, waterways and creeks setbacks shall be 25 feet there will be no setbacks for, for ponds or waterways that are man-made all right thanks sir I'm not sure is we voting on this one. Uh, yes, this will be the second reading, and I'll read the title on this one too. Right. An ordinance per the requirements of the Florida Statute 163.3201 to adopt land development regulations and the requirements of Florida Statutes 163.3202 for the land development regulations to be consistent with the adopted comprehensive plan, providing for repeal of ordinance in conflict therewith, providing for severability, uh, codification, and providing for an effective date. All right, thank you, sir. All right, commissioners, any questions on this? Concerns? All right, anyone in the public? Open to the public. 
when the public, when any questions or concerns. All right, any staff members, any questions or concerns? All right, board members, no questions or concerns? Anyone in the public? All right, close to the public. All right, what's the wishes of the board? Make a motion to approve. All right, motion by Commissioner Husband. Second. Second by Commissioner Farrell. Any further board discussion? Anyone in the public? Questions or concerns? All right, any opposition to the motion? Motion passed 5 and 0. All right, thank you, Mr. Crane. All right, moving on down to item 8 public hearing review and consideration of PDRB. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. Uh, you have a memorandum there in your packet. Um, the Technical Advisory Committee. Uh, had reviewed the Gulf County Comprehensive Plan, uh, specifically Chapter 4, Sanitary Sewer, Solid Waste, Drainage, uh, Potable Water, and Natural Groundwater Aquifer Recharge Element. The TAC has recommended an amendment to Goal 2, Policy 2.1.3, and asked that a public hearing be held uh, before the Planning Development Review Board to discuss uh, and receive comments from the public and make a recommendation to the Board of County Commissioners regarding this amendment. Planning Development Review Board uh, recommendations are listed below in the memorandum. Uh, recommended text to be removed will be crossed through and uh, the new text added will be underlined. Uh, the only thing changed in this, um, of course, in the areas where just an overview in the areas uh, where it said 2020 because it's a 10 year water supply planning work plan. Uh, it went through 2020 and to update our comprehensive plan and keep it current, we're extending that out to 2035. Uh, so there's several areas where it listed 2020 that will be changing to 2035. Um, the other changes uh, was, of course, the it used to say lighthouse utilities, which the water department's been taken over by the county. So we've struck out the lighthouse utilities out of that. Uh, the main change that we were looking at was that uh, it used to read Gulf County will impose a 600 foot buffer um, along the unincorporated areas of the Gulf County Freshwater Canal. Uh, the TAC and the PDRB recommended that we change it uh, to now read Gulf County will impose a 150 foot buffer for residential and low intensity commercial and a 500 foot buffer for high intensity commercial along the unincorporated areas of Gulf County Freshwater Canal as shown in the land use map to protect the canal as a primary water resource uh, through the 2035 planning period. Um, part of this came from in reaching out to the city, uh, the canal is actually owned by the city as well as the property around it. Um, in reaching out to the city, uh, we had looked at several areas that the city does not impose any uh, setback on their own canal. Uh, the only thing they have is the land, which in most cases is around 150 feet uh, that surrounds the canal from the water's edge. And but yet the county was imposing a 600 foot buffer. And we have several uh, properties up in the uh, Dalkeith area that were extremely uh, affected by this uh, to the point that their entire property was taken up uh, by the buffer, which made their property useless and not able to do anything with. And so uh, that was one of the things that, uh, you know, uh, sent us in the direction of trying to figure out if there was anything that we could do for that. And uh, so the recommendation would be to change it from the 600 to the 150, but anything uh, high intensity commercial would still remain at 500. Okay. All right. Any questions, commissioners, any concerns? High intensity commercial. As far as a plant, Michael, what would be, I mean, a gas station would be high intensity. How about a cement plant? Uh, no, I wouldn't consider that high intensity. Uh, but well, anything with the drive through, there, there's a definition in our uh, okay, LDR I'll, I'll of what high it. intensity is. But, but yeah, an ATM is high intensity because it has a lot of traffic. So it's, it's more about traffic than it is use specifically. Uh, but the, the biggest argument for this was when it gets into the city of Port St. Joe, and I think it comes up behind uh, Commerce the, Park. Commerce Park, the city had a zero setback, and then we had a 600 foot in, in you know, from a farm in Dalkey. So yeah, and actually, if you right behind the old compactor there, it's not as the crow flies, it's not very far. Correct, to the, correct. To the, so, so all know? of that we took into account that that you know it was massive overkill. Yeah. Then it, you think about what feeds the water ditch, the freshwater, the Chipola River. Mm -hmm. We have a much smaller setback off the Chipotle River that feeds the water ditch. So the 600, we can't find 
how that happened. It just happened. It got slipped in, and again, there's no meeting minutes that we were, it was discussed or talked about. It was not in the original comp plan. Uh, when did it get added? Did we decide 2008 I, or something like that? Yes, sir. That's what Mr. Butler had said. So we went back to the original comp plan, the 90 comp plan that was adopted in 92, the end of 92, and it, there was no setback. And then it just kind of happened. And again, it makes no sense that if right next to the water plant, it's zero and we're 600 <laughs> feet otherwise. So it still leads a pretty good setback uh, off of that. But again, it was, it was really made no sense and it was affecting people's ability to use their property, especially on the north end of the county. Yeah, and it'll, it'll end up being more than that because up in that the specific area that we were looking at, I think their property from Water's Edge goes out to like a 175 feet. So uh, it would be beyond that before we could even start, and then you would impose our normal setback. So in the end, it's you know it would still be greater than the 150 that we're putting in. Uh, but like I say, most of the land around the canal on unincorporated areas is going to be, you know, Deseret property anyway. So. And the other thing, uh, just to let you guys know on this, is that this will be, because it's a text change, it will be uh, a comprehensive plan that has to go through the, uh, the state uh, for this amendment. So if you guys approve it today, then we will come back and have the first reading of the ordinance uh, next month, in which time then I'll have 10 days to submit it to the state and seven other agencies that it goes to, uh, including Northwest Florida Water Management District, DEP, and they will all have 30 days to respond back with comments, at which time then, you know, we'll take into account any comments that they have and then have the second reading of our ordinance. So it's still a couple months before this can become official, but this is just the start of it. All right. Any questions, commissioners? All right. Open to the public. Anyone in the public? Questions, concerns? And staff members, any more questions or concerns? No questions or concerns, commissioners? All right, anyone in the public? Questions or concerns? <coughs> All right, close to the public. All right, what's the wishes of the board? Move to approve. All right, motion by Commissioner Farrell. Second. Second by Commissioner Rich. All right, any further board <laughs> discussion? All right, anyone in the public? Anyone in the public? Questions or concerns? All right, any opposition to the motion? Motion passed 5 and 0. All right, thank you, sir. All right, Mr. Chairman, Hammond. I think we're ready on bids. Okay, all right, back up to the bid. Bid number 2324-09 for the Overstreet Roadway Improvements. First bidder is C.W. Roberts Contracting, Inc. Their bid is $2,997,857. American Sand and Asphalt Paving, their bid is $2,925,000, oh, sorry, $756.72. Gulf Coast Utility Contractors, $4,464,099. And the last bid is Roberts and Roberts Inc. Their bid is $2,713,414.72. Mr. Right. Chairman, if we could table these, we're we waiting on final approval. So this, it, it may be a table and then maybe at the next meeting a contingent upon deal, but, but we're, did you say two months out? About. Are any questions, commissioners, in reference to table? I entertain a motion to table. So moved. Motion by Commissioner McCrone. Second. Second by Commissioner Husband. Are there any further board discussion on this tabling? Anyone in the public on tabling this? All right, any opposition to the motion? All right, motion passed five and a half. All right, Mr. Hammond, you have the floor. Uh, Clay, they're starting in both in two places on the water line. Is that the game plan? That is game plan. So start in Jones Homestead. We've got two 12-inch lines that run down that road and then also start near the railroad, uh, the stretch that we're going down through the railroad with. So they have a couple crews working. And then... Also, they'll have a third crew, really, if you want to consider the boring crew a third crew that'll be coming in doing the directional bore. So they'll, when they get fired up, we're going to have a lot of stuff happening. A lot of things happening, a lot of pipe on the road, and, and again, north of the railroad tracks and, and in Jones Homestead to start with. So 
we're going down on Jones Homestead Road. So it's going down Jones Homestead Road to the plant, then up 98 to Twine, down Twine uh, to the Madison, cross the railroad tracks there, and, and to 71, like close to the LNP site, and then to White City. Well, then I, we could have cut that line before we got all the driveways there. So, so the driveways aren't too bad because we're on the opposite side of the road <clears throat> from all, <clears throat> excuse me. But there are maybe five or six that are well, going to be affected by it. Yeah. Okay. Um, Good Friday. We have our third makeup call with DEM, so hopefully we'll get a good answer. It may go well, it may go bad, but I'm going to be nice since it's going to be Good Friday. So that's all I've got, Mr. Chairman. All right. Novak, you got anything? Yes, sir. All right, commissioners, y'all got anything? All right, Ms. Ms. Rose. Terry O'Neill. Come on up, Mr. O'Neill. Good morning, Commissioner Quinn. Good morning. Mr. Rich, Mr. McCrone, Mr. Farrell, and Mr. Husband. Um, I'd like to say again that... St state your name, Mr. Mr. O'Neill. Ter Ter Terry O'Neill. Thank you, sir. And I live at uh, 1203 Friendship Avenue in Panama City. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to say again that uh, you guys run a serious government here for the people of Gulf County. Uh, after watching Mr. Smallwood's presentation from the 27th, commission meeting, I'd like to express my thanks to Mr. Smallwood, the, the county staff, and the employees uh, of the county for the work that's being done with regard to capital planning and non-routine maintenance. The presentation was informative, it was important, and it was meaningful. Uh, nine major equipment purchases, emergency service vehicles, upgraded maintenance equipment to improve efficiency and productivity. Uh, planning for future supply chain issues that affect critical equipment and infrastructure. Uh, that, that's really important in today's world. Uh, fuel depot. Uh, fuel, fuel prices uh, last week jumped 20 cents a gallon. I guess that represents about $3,000 savings in one fill-up, not to mention the savings uh, buying in bulk. This is smart business. Water. Uh, water is our second basic need. Uh, right after air and just before food. So planning for a new water plant, water storage, piping, uh, that really is planning for the future. Uh, our, our, our one comment about the water system is don't allow any outside source uh, to be connected for automation or computerization, uh, maintaining an air gap between any control system and the outside world will maintain uh, independence and security of the system, I feel. Uh, just my comment. Uh, recreation, uh, my word, uh, boat ramps, uh, expansion plans, docks, <coughs> playgrounds, uh, pickleball, courts, dog parks, and flags at Beacon Park. Um, I need to digress for just a minute. I was in high school at the end of the Vietnam War. I've never seen or been in combat. <clears throat> but after watching a colorized version documentary on World War II recently, uh, I was seeing pictures of all the dead bodies of young American men in the bloody red water of the sea and the dead bodies scattered across the beaches. Um, the price that has been paid for us to be here now and in this time is unfathomable. Uh, that flag, I salute that flag every time I pass that park. Uh, back to my comments, um, county staff, uh, blasting and repainting basketball goal uh, what a novel idea in, in this day of, of throw away and buy new. Uh, excellent job with the county resources there um, and saving money. Paving, preparation for upcoming new business, those all serve in the county's best interest. I think I counted 15 plus roads repaved all over the county in the pre pre presentation. Can I get a motion to extend? So moved. Motion by Commissioner Second. Farrell, second by Commissioner McCrone in the opposition. Motion passed five minutes. Go ahead, sir. Highland View, St. Joe Beach, Beacon Hill, all, all set for upcoming paving. Uh, nine plus bridges, box culverts repaired, replaced, repurposed, um, reusing a bridge. Talk about recycling. Um, water, sewage, draining, piping, 
replacements. Uh, I can't express how, how impressed I am with the county government, the county staff, and the county employees. You get the funding because you get things done. Um, what is even more impressive is when Mr. Hammond stated at the end of the presentation that unlike the neighboring counties, you didn't borrow one penny. Uh, now, I told you before, I'm not the smartest person. I'm very, very far from it. But what I do know this country needs is, is leaders, and that's leaders who understand the founding principles of honesty and integrity. You folks are those leaders. The, the country also needs citizens, like Mr. Fields back here, who understand and support those same principles of honesty, integrity, and support for the people they are responsible for taking care of. You, the staff, employees of Gulf County, um, and citizens are, are, are those people. I'm so sick and tired of what I see happening all across the country, an out-of-control federal government, a two-tiered justice system, a rise in crime, an unsecured border, and most importantly, the breakdown of the American family. All right, all of you are doing the right thing for the citizens of Gulf County, and I just wanted to say uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Very sincerely, Terry O'Neill. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Terry. We appreciate, appreciate it. it. All right, Ms. Ms. Rose, you got anybody else? I don't have anyone. All right, Commissioner, y'all got anything? Thank you. All right, anyone in the public? I'm coming for the board. All right, take this opportunity to thank you for coming to the Board of County Commissioners meeting. I entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Motion second. by Commissioner McCrone, second by Commissioner Farrell. Any opposition? Motion passed 5 and 0.